Well, good morning all and welcome to the uh, NFC Auditorium. Uh, Matt Wilcox is our first, first presenter of the day, uh, discarding data. I think I do that sort of pretty automatically without even actually trying, so it'll be good to hear it's, uh, something about it. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Welcome to the fun and profit session. Um, I'm going to be talking more about fun, and uh, Leslie's talk is up next. We'll be covering the, uh, the fun bits a bit more thoroughly than I am, I think. Um, so, as, as, as my introduction just said, you know, uh, a lot of us discard data on a fairly regular basis. Um, some of us don't. Um, I, one of my colleagues says he never deletes an email. I said, not even spam. He said, well, I filter my spam. I said, that's deleting email. He said, well, anyway. But the steady state of disks is full, and this has been true for the last 40 years or so. Um, disks are now getting larger, faster enough that uh, some people say, well, I just buy a new laptop when my hard drive fills up, and it's got a larger hard disk in it. Um, that's not a great uh, tactic when you're using a solid-state drive, and this talk is uh, mostly about SSDs. Um, when, you have, um, solid, when you have a solid-state drive, uh, keeping it full actually slows it down, and it causes it to wear out more quickly. And most of this talk is going to be about why it, that happens. Um, I don't practice what I preach. That is a 3% empty hard drive, and that is my that is slash home on this laptop. Um, yeah, I need to fix that. A little bit of uh, you know, going through my data and figuring out what I really don't need to carry around with me anymore. Some large vent, some of some vendors of large SCSI arrays, fiber channel arrays, that sort of thing. Some, of, some of those vendors care about uh, this kind of thing as well. Um, can I just sh show of hands, who, who's got a solid state drive who's going to get one soon? Lots of you. Who, who's got a million dollar fiber channel array? Two? Two. Okay. You're going to be bored. The rest of you, you're going to be interested. So why do SSDs care whether they're full or not? I mean, your standard hard drive doesn't care. The, an SSD is really emulating a hard drive. It's, it's, it's not a hard drive. Internally, it looks very, very different from any piece of spinning rust that you've ever seen. Um, the, the current generation of SSDs, and this won't be true forever, but it's going to be true for, I would think, the next five years at least. And uh, if my history of predictions is true. I'm not good at making predictions. Um, as, uh, NAND has lots of really interesting characteristics uh, in terms of it, it. It's very different in terms of its access time, its seek time. So, you know, if, if, if a hard drive has to seek across uh, half the platter, that's going to cost, you know, milliseconds of time. And there's no equivalent access time latency on uh, accessing a NAND chip. You just go right to that NAND chip. But uh, what's, uh, one advantage of spinning Rust is that when you want to overwrite a sector, you go and overwrite a sector. NAND doesn't let you do that. If you want to write to a block of NAND that you've written to before, you have to erase it first. And for that reason, um, what people do is they put a, a remapping layer between the, uh, w what appears to be the hard drive and the NAND chips themselves. So when you write to block five, and then you write something else to block five, that doesn't get written to the same uh, NAND chip that, that you wrote to earlier. It gets written somewhere completely different, and the drive keeps, keeps a mapping, know it, knowing that block five is now NAND block 97, instead of NAND block 63, that it was the first time you wrote to, NAND block five, to, to the SSD block 5. There's, uh, my employer considers that um, valuable intellectual property, exactly what algorithms are used. And so they don't even tell me what algorithms they use within the drive. Um, but in order to uh, maximize the longevity of the drive, you have to try and use all the NAND blocks equally. Write to them an equal number of times. The number of reads you do to a NAND probably doesn't matter all that much, but uh, when, when you're writing to particular blocks of NAND, you, you, you want to try and spread those writes out evenly across the entire drive. 
and there's, there's, there's a tension there. There's a tension between um, wanting to write only to uh, blocks that you can erase, and there's a tension between writing to uh, writing evenly. So from time to time, you have to wait for, instead of, instead of just looking for uh, erase blocks which are now completely empty, you have to uh, copy data out of one that is uh, partially empty into a, into a fresh block. And this is called write amplification, where you do one write, you, you know, you write perhaps half a K to the drive, and the drive goes off and actually writes 9K of data that you didn't know about, but this is causing your NAND chips to wear down faster. And this is true to all uh, NAND-based hard drives. It's, 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 it's just how they're made. So how does the drive know which of these NAND blocks are, are, are still, still have good data in them and which ones have only stale data in them and can be erased? Well, it keeps track. But the only way that we have of telling the drive which blocks are, uh, you know, aren't, aren't used anymore is by overwriting them. And once you've overwritten them, you've given it new data to store. So there isn't a way to say, oh, yeah, I just deleted this 1.1 um, gigabyte file that, that was a, a half-hour episode of, of The Simpsons. Um, you, the drive still thinks all those data blocks are in use because the operating system hasn't told it, hey, those blocks aren't in use anymore. Because there isn't a way. Until trim. Um, ACS2 is the, the name of the standard that comes out of the, uh, the, the T13 committee who specify uh, serial ATA, and they, they used to specify parallel ATA, but I think they've pretty much stopped work on that. So they came up with this command called data set management, and uh, it has a sub-function called trim. So everyone talks about a trim command. It's slightly inappropriate. It's not the official standard body specified thing, but everyone just calls it the trim command because it is. Um, in a single trim command, you can tell it about 4 million different ranges. In each, in each range, you can tell it up to 64K. So you, you, you can, with a single command, you can tell the drive to forget about a huge amount of data. So problem solved. And uh, yeah, that's 15 minutes. And perhaps I should you know, get, get on with the rest of my slides. So what, what are the problems with trim? Well, the ATA standards body did not specify what the appropriate uh, response was from the drive if you read a trimmed sector. And you, you can see how they made this mistake. Um, you know, you, 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 you're basically breaking your promise to the drive. You're telling the drive, I don't care what's in this block. I will never read it again. Get rid of it. And then you're going back and saying, oh, yeah, what, what's, what, what's, what's in that block? So some drives will return the old contents, what used to be in that sector. Uh, some drives return zeros. Some drives will return completely random data. They aren't permitted to return data that, used, that was written to a different sector. That would, be, that would be a bug. That would be a security hole. That would be pretty horrible. The best bit is that some drives will do each of these different things depending on exactly which block it was that you sent the trim down for. And some drives will change their answer over time. And if you're doing RAID 5 and you've calculated your parity over this data block and then it changes your parity, you, 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 you've, you've just lost data. I mean, the, the, drives are gonna, the, the controller's just going to say, it's, it's gone. Um, the ATA committee did realize they'd made a mistake. And they have since um, expanded. They've, they've added some little bits here and there that's, that allow the drive to say, um, I return zeros. And I promise I will never change the result after you've read it. So things have got a little better. But uh, there's, there's an awful lot of drives from um, cheaper manufacturers who do not set these bits. And so they're not good for using in RAID arrays. Yeah. 
Okay, the, the question was why would anyone read a sector that's been trimmed and the proposed response was because you've done a DD read of the entire drive, which is true. If, if you're going to image a drive, then yes. And if, in, in that case, if you're imaging a drive, then you, you wouldn't uh, care about what data it was. It could be any data as long as it wasn't data that should have been somewhere else on the drive. Um, RAID 5 is, is, is a great example of somewhere where you might, if, if, if you aren't trimming an entire um, RAID stripe at once, then you would want to calculate parity over that block. So you, you need it to be deterministic. Um, we did have some other examples, but I've, I've forgotten what they were. But there, there, there are several legitimate cases, but they are kind of corner cases. And so you, you really can understand why the IDE committee didn't didn't think of them before putting out the spec. So I, I'm, I'm sure all of us, I certainly have, issued an RM minus RF in a directory that they really didn't mean to. Um, I had a tape backup. Um, I appreciate most of us don't have tape drives. Um, so a lot of people, when they do that kind of thing, reach for the power, pull the, pull the power as quickly as possible, and uh, hope that they can use some kind of drive recovery program to get their, their file system back. Um, but if the trim has gone down and the drive has actually thrown away your data, there is no way in the world you can get that back. You don't even know even if you pull the drive apart and look at the NAND chips with, with an electron microscope, you, you're, you're still not going to know which sec, what, what the mapping was. You know you wanted sector 208, but you, don't, you have no idea which NAND block that's in, because the drive won't tell you. So, but maybe this isn't a huge problem. I mean, EXT3 already makes underleaks really, really hard. Because what, what EXT3 does, what, what, what X2 did was simply uh, write, uh, uh, null out the, 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 uh, the inode entry. And so you could go looking for bits of the file that you knew you know, had certain signatures. Uh, what EXT3 does is it actually writes zeros to the indirect and the double indirect and the triple indirect blocks. And so you, you, you can't find most of the blocks that you've got, that, that, that you had in the file. Um, something else that might save you is BTRFS snapshots. If you've been creating a snapshot, then it's kind of like having an online rolling backup. Um, and of course, you obviously back up your drives to you know, other hard drives because <laughs> tape doesn't keep up with drives these days. The, the, the rate of increase in, in drives is just ridiculous compared to the, the increase in tape. So um, I, I was talking with um, some of my friends and they're saying, yeah, we, we, we back up we 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 just go out and buy large hard drives and back up to those. You all make backups, right? Yeah. Um, computer forensics people don't like trim. Um, if you've, uh, you, you you can imagine there are certain raids where the uh, law enforcement authorities might or customs officials might confiscate your hard drive and go through it. Um, bug or feature? that uh, they can't get the data that you've deleted. Okay, the, the, the question was, why is it not possible to determine what the mapping was between the, uh, the, the drive sectors and the NAND blocks? Um, because obviously the drive does know. I mean, if, if, if you pull the power on the drive and plug it back in, the drive um, actually does a reconstruction and figures out where all the blocks on it are. So the drive, the drive does know. Um, there isn't a way, the, the, there is no um, specified way to get what the current mappings are from the drive. Um, I don't even know if there is an unspecified way. If, if, if there's something, you know, maybe there's a way, there's a magic command that, that might get it to tell you what that current mapping is. Um, you would have to know an awful lot about how that 
generation of drive works internally because it can change from uh, firmer revision to firmer re revision. It's, it's not even a question of knowing what it is for a given model. Um, each time you update the firmware, you might have a different uh, mapping. And one final problem with trim, and this one I actually care about, is that trim can be rather slow. Um, and there's two reasons for this. Um, one is that the ATA specification defines different classes of commands. Uh, so we had PIO commands, and then we had DMA commands, because programmed I.O. is quite kind of slow. And then there were um, first-party DMA commands, and, and just on and on, different, re different revisions of the spec covering up these diff com this completely crap interface that, that, that was inherited you know, all, all, all the way from the mid-1980s. Um, these commands still exist in the, in the modern serial ATA standard of today, and uh, drives are actually supposed to respond to them. Um, the latest uh, set of commands are called NCQ, uh, Native Command Queuing. And the big advantage of NCQ is it does what SCSI's been doing for two decades, which is lets the drive have more than one command to do at once. And this was a bit of a win back when we had rotating media, because you could give the drive, say, four commands at once, and the drive would figure out what the optimum motion was for the disk for the drive head so that it could service those four commands, so that the commands might come back completed in a different order from the order you sent them down. And that was okay. That was, that was cool. We understood how to do that. Um, ATA came up with this innovation um, you know, about five years ago. Um, but for some reason, and I'm not quite sure what it was, when they specified this data set management command, or trim, they specified it as a DMA command rather than an NCQ command. So in order to send a DMA command, you have to wait for all the currently existing NCQ commands to come back. Well, first, we have to stop sending any more NCQ commands. Then you wait for all the currently existing ones to come back. Then you can send a DMA command. You wait for it to come back, and then you can send a whole bunch, all, all, all the NCQ commands that have been batched up behind it, waiting for that DMA command to finish. The, uh, the other problem is that the drive has to record the information. Uh, it has to uh, mess around in its internal data structures and say, oh, the, these blocks, they aren't used anymore. They no longer map to given areas of NAND, or they map to the special NAND sector that always returns zero, or however it is that, however it is that they're working internally. Um, oh, something I forgot to mention is that when you, uh, the, the, with rotating media, when you're sending down four commands at once, that was, that was about the, the optimum number of commands to have with the drive at once was four. Maybe eight, depends on your, your exact workload. But with, uh, with, with SSDs, uh, at least those based on NAND, um, you are best served by giving it as many commands to chew on at once as it can. Internally, all, all these drives, I think from all the manufacturers, are extremely parallel. There's quite a lot of latency involved in, access in, in reading and writing NAND chips. So if you can overlap these operations, which you can, because each NAND chip is on a separate channel and is completely independent of each other, if the drive's got a, a lot of work to do, you, 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 uh, you, can, you, you can get a lot more work done in a given period of time than if you just sent them one at a time. So NCQ commands are really, really important for SSDs, which is why I'm, I'm very perplexed that they went and specified this as a DMA command. Question. Yeah, the, the, the comment was made that uh, it's th this, this performance problem can be a whole lot worse on the cheaper drives because the the most naive implementation you can think of for trim is that you actually do the NAND arrays, which can take a very long time, before you return and say, yes, yes, I did that command. Um, yes, buying cheap SSDs 
means you don't value your time or your data because they lose data. Yeah. By an expensive drive, like uh, from some company. I'm sorry? Um, so, obviously, being a Linux kernel programmer, my role in all this was to do a Linux implementation. Um, and this turned out to be an awful lot more tricky and time consuming than I had ever imagined. Uh, so the, f <laughs> the first problem is that the ATA subsystem is still deeply entwined into the SCSI subsystem. And you can't send an ATA command for which there is no SCSI equivalent. So first I have to look at SCSI. So what's the SCSI equivalent of trim? Well, the T10 SCSI committee, in comparison to the T13 ATA committee, um, is full of smarter people. But they don't always make smart decisions. They, they, they went and specified two different commands. There, 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 were, there, were, there were two proposals, one called write same and one called unmap. And instead of making a decision, they put them both in the spec. I've talked with a number of array manufacturers. They are all, they've all implemented one or the other and are in the process of implementing the second one. None of them are happy with the situation. I've talked to several other people who have often done at SCSI. None of them are happy with the situation either. The committee has failed to produce a, a, a reasonable standard. But SCSI drives, uh, people are not making uh, NAND-based SCSI drives that I know of. People are building big arrays with NANDs as some component of this multi-tier storage architecture. But no, no one's actually going out and making um, SSDs with a SCSI interface. And there's, a, there's a number of reasons for that, some better than others. Um, the, the problem with these uh, SCSI commands is that they don't quite match trim. Write same says, um, here's a block of data, write it to this range of blocks. Um, and what the array does is then says, are all, these, are all the bytes in this block zero? Okay, then I'll just get rid of it. I'll, 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 I won't actually write it, I'll just remember that all these blocks are now zero. And you're thinking, well, hang on, why are they, why, why are they doing this? Well, the current rage amongst these big array manufacturers is, um, is, is, is called thin provisioning. And what they do is they'll sell you a 10 petabyte array with one petabyte of disk in it and for much cheaper than actually selling you 10 petabytes of, of storage. And when you've used about 800 terabytes of it, the, uh, the array calls home and the salesman calls you up and says, uh, so um, did, did you know your, your array is running low on disk? No, you didn't, okay. Well, we, we've got a special offer on this week. We'll sell you another petabyte of hard drive. Very cheap, good prices just for you. And uh, you, you say, oh, right, yes. Uh, ra rather than sending out an email telling everyone to delete all their data, which I could, I'll just spend a bit of extra money. And so the salesman gets his bonus and everyone's happy. Um, some people are a bit are, are wise to this and say, well, hang on. We, we've actually gone and deleted 700 gigabytes there. Uh, we, we, sorry, 700 terabytes. We'd, we, we'd like to get that data back. And so uh, for thin provisioning purposes, uh, they want to be able to uh, let these arrays know that the, these, these blocks are not in use anymore. Um, the, the other interesting issue is that SATA drives can be plugged into SAS disk arrays. So uh, this, this is how we're currently doing our, our TPC benchmark. Uh, we don't do TPC benchmark. Our, our uh, online transaction processing uh, benchmark runs with a large commercial database. Um, what, what, what we do is we, we, we buy uh, SAS HBAs, uh, SAS cards, plug them into these uh, disk arrays, uh, and then plug SATA drives into 
those uh, SAS arrays. So the, 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 the card talks the SAS protocol, which is essentially SCSI. It's, it's, a, it's, it's one of the SCSI protocols. It talks SAS between the card and the chassis. The chassis has a translation layer that translates SCSI into ATA commands and sends the ATA commands to the drives. So inside that enclosure, there is a fairly complex bit of software translating from one protocol to another. And given the complexity we have had in Linux trying to translate between these SCSI commands and these ATA commands, I am entirely unconvinced that the firmware writers for these uh, enclosures are going to get it right. So back to the Linux implementation. Oh, I explained right same, not unmap. Yes, sorry, sorry, my my bad. Uh, unmap is a lot is a lot more like trim than right same is, um, in that unmap can specify a whole bunch of different array, uh, dif different ranges in in a single command, uh, and it can uh, and it doesn't actually do it doesn't actually transfer data to the drive that the array has to. Excuse me, that the, the array has to check is is all zeros or not. Um, it just it, it transfers a, a list of sectors and says, just get rid of all these. So it's a lot like trim, but both uh, trim and unmap send a uh, s s send a list of, of blocks, and the lists are in a completely different format for no really good reason. Uh, each committee used a, a, a essentially a, a struct that they had already defined. Um, but, of course, they were differently defined. So, in the Linux implementation, we, we started out, and uh, a lot of this work was done by uh, my good friend and colleague, Dave Woodhouse. Um, we started out with a block layer API so that file systems could be converted to send discards down uh, to the block device. And we also added an IOCTL so that user space could submit discards. And this is mostly for testing purposes. Uh, we've got four file systems currently using this API. Uh, I'm aware of uh, a few more patches that are in progress. I know XFS is working on it. There are, pa there are unmerged patches for EXT2 and EXT3. Um, and I, I suspect uh, other file systems will follow suit in the future as more drives actually implement trim and it starts to become a more, uh, more pressing issue for them. And uh, because Dave Woodhouse was, was doing this bit of the work, he implemented M uh, discards in the MTD block layer. For those of you who don't know, MTD stands for uh, Memory Technology Devices. It's basically how Linux implements uh, support for, uh, for, for flash chips natively. It, rather than having uh, flash chips hidden behind um, uh, an ATA controller, we, on, on some systems, like the OLPC, I think, you, the, the NAND chips are basically accessible directly by Linux. So SD, which is the SCSI driver, uh, translates dis uh, discard commands coming down from the file system into this write same command. Uh, that, that work was actually done by Christoph Helwig. Um, LibATA translates that write same command into a trim command. And we're done. Why don't we use unmap instead? Um, because the array that Christoph was working with supported write same and not unmap. Uh, the, there's also a philosophical disagreement, um, and Christoph's on one side of us and I'm on the other, about whether the, the, the appropriate API within the kernel is to say this range needs to be discarded, or whether the, the appropriate API is to say these ranges need to be discarded. And unmap and trim will support the second API, and write same only supports the first. So. That, 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 that's a, an ongoing uh, point of disagreement. Good. Implement both. Yes, of course. The, the, uh, actually, we might. <laughs> we, 
one, one, one of the options we're looking at is to have uh, uh, a three-way choice to say, well, what, what, what kind of device are we sending this command to? Does it support unmap? Does it support write same? Does it support trim? And, and construct the appropriate command and, and, and send that down rather than translating it in the ATA layer. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it may just work out that we have to do it that way. Could we pop back a slide for 10 seconds of frantic scribbling? Oh, sorry. Thank yeah. you. Um, uh, the, the, the slides will be available uh, af after the talk. I've, I've been given instructions to put them on this USB key so they can get uploaded to the website. So you will be able to get the slides afterwards. Is there any kind of um, uh, protocol command in, in uh, any of the protocols that allows you to um, just directly access the flash block so that you could use the MTD driver? And if not, will someone propose one? Uh, that's kind of out of scope for this talk. Um, we, we can talk about that later. Okay, so we've implemented it, and that's good. But what I mean, and it really is good. You know, I've, I've got 97% free on that hard drive. I, I would like to go off deleting stuff and have it actually make a difference to, you know, my my hard drive's longevity. But what's what, what's the cost? And so I ran some benchmarks on um, BTRFS, um, and I saw a 50% performance penalty. The, the the time taken to delete a kernel tree went up from four seconds to six seconds. And that's, that, that, that's pretty hefty. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty much a worst case scenario for using trim. You, you probably wouldn't use it in, uh, you probably wouldn't notice it in day-to-day -day operations. But it, it's kind of hard to live with yourself knowing you just slow down deletes by 50%. But as I started gathering data for this, I ran, the, I ran this benchmark over and over again, creating country, delete the country, untile the country, delete the country. And the penalty went down substantially. Um, and we really don't know what's gone on there. Uh, it, it, it could be a BTRFS thing. The BTRFS is, is now issuing its discards differently or issuing fewer discards um, because we tried doing this using EXT4 and didn't see that kind, of, didn't see you know this 50% to 10% discrepancy. Um, it might be something to do with the drive as you know, various blocks have been used and discard, it's, it's responding differently. We, 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 we don't know at this point, we don't have the data. But back when I was seeing a 50% performance <laughs> decrease, I thought, hey, this would be a great thing to write a paper about. Oops. So back to the, the, the point made earlier about uh, trims versus right same. The, the trim command lets you specify lots of different ranges all, all in one command. So what we can do is group them. You, you know, if, 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 if we've deleted a file and that's freed up blocks here, 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 and here, we can send out one trim command that does all that. But our current API only lets us send down uh, you know, a, a single range at a time. So you send down four trims instead of one. So at the file system level, we could know we could know we we could we could change the the block layer API to let you send down multiple ranges at once. Uh, what I was trying to do here was fix it up again at the I/O scheduler. So keep the API very simple for the file system, where it will send four commands, and then when we get down to actually going to issue the commands, we say, ah, right, well, we've got four together here. Let's batch them all up into a single command and send that one instead of four. And then I looked at the CFQ ele elevator, which stands for completely fair queuing. It's the default elevator in Linux. And it's really, really complicated. Uh, I, I, I think it would take me about a month of reading it to understand it. I said, OK, that's not going to happen. I don't have time for that. So I took the NOAP elevator, which is very, very simple. Commands come in, commands go out. They go out in the order they come in. There's a queue. It's a simple list. So I said, right, well, I'll make it more complicated. So I, I, I copied the NOAP elevator called to a new elevator. And I decided I'll call it the discard elevator, because I'm original in my naming. And uh, I gave it a second queue. So uh, 
normal commands go in the first queue and discard commands go in the second queue. And when uh, commands go out, anything that's in the ordinary queue goes out first, and anything in the discard queue goes out second. Can anyone spot the bug? Race condition. That's right. If you, if you discard a sector and then you write to it and you get the write coming before the discard, you're kind of screwed. So that's why this is a proof of concept only, because I need to put in... Yes, there's also a security hole for the same reason. You are correct. So this, is, this was only a proof of concept. So the 50% penalty went down to about 9% in the end. Just, just, so just whether, if, if the file system is issuing discards, then performance is 91% of what it used to be. But using no-op instead of CFQ get, gets you back 3% performance. All, all, all the uh, complex stuff that the CFQ elevator does actually penalizes you by about 3%, or at least penalize me using my hardware. It may be different for you. And I'm glad that I only I didn't spend too much time on doing this because using the discard elevator loses me another 2% of performance. So that wasn't worth doing. Or it isn't worth fixing. It's worth, it's worth doing, but not worth fixing. So there's a lot more work that can be done here. Um, I haven't yet tried to merge multiple discards into a single trim. Another possibility is saying, well, you know, trims are slow, and it doesn't really matter if there's a couple of kilobytes here and a couple of kilobytes there that gets trimmed. We'll just ignore the fact that, there's, that these trims are, have been sent by the file system and uh, pretend that they were never sent. It's only a, trim is only a performance optimization. It's not guaranteed to, to write to these, these sectors. A third possibility is to stop the file systems doing discard at all. Uh, it, it's, it's entirely legitimate to have like a background scrubbing task that goes through looking for, uh, for large ranges that aren't actually in use anymore and send down trims for those ranges. That's an entirely reasonable way to approach it. And we haven't even tried that. Um, and of course, if, 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 if I continue this work, I, I, if I continue with this I.O. elevator, I need to ensure that writes don't pass discards. That's the end of my talk. Um, any more questions? There's one up at the back there. Uh, forgive me for not knowing a whole lot about how command queuing works on disks, but the thing about writes not passing discards or the reverse. Does command queuing really not have a serial number that says I got these from the host and that they are, they're logically in this order? Disk, please don't reorder them. Is that seriously not there in command queuing? SCSI has that bit. So SATA probably doesn't. I'm not sure whether ATA has that bit or not. Because if it does, then you wouldn't need to do that unless the disk was actually broken. Right. Well, so the, 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 there are different places where um, writes and discards might pass each other. Uh, I'm talking about in the, disk, in, in, in the uh, host side elevator before we send the commands to the disk. Um, then, as, 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 as I think you were saying, you've got the point where it might, uh, the, the disk firmware might reorder them, and yeah, that would be a, a, a huge problem. Um, one point I forgot to put on the further work here is um, not issuing, figuring out where we can not issue discards. Because if you've, if you've got the situation where you're, you're writing to a sector immediately after you've discarded it, sending that discard was a complete waste because the drive knows the, con the old contents of that aren't used anymore because you've just overwritten it. So if, y if you know you're about to write to a sector, don't send a discard for it. Okay. Okay.
Yeah, there you go. Hey. Um, if that batching works, uh, if you got that successfully working in past the prototype stage, is that the same thing as virtually creating that into this NCQ command you were talking about? Uh, no, no, it's not. Um, so the, 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 the bottlenecks are at different levels of, of, of the stack. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm talking about working quite high up before we issue the I.O. to the drive. Um, the NCQ versus DMA is happening at, at the command protocol level down between the, uh, the ATA adapter and the drive. Um, can I... Just wondering if I mean, you're looking at merging multiple disk cards. Um, just wondering if you can say you know, if the uh, if the share, the I/O scheduler has no writes anymore in it, then it's safe to send on a trim because Absolutely. at that point, you know. The drive is presumably not going to organise discards before writes, yeah. Um, or if it does, then it was, it's optimising anyway, so um, that's okay. But you're not having to scan through the, the I/O scheduler and re reorder things yourself. Yeah. We've got about time for one more question. Can you? The whole reordering of discards is just kind of odd. Would adding a richer VFS API to Linux help in that instead of RM actually being a loop that issues a million or 100,000 deletes and then unlinks and everything, would having RM RF be able to go unlink recursive that which in the kernel could coalesce into a giant Hydra of a trim. Um, I see a potential problem with that in that you, 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 would, you would have the kernel having to error out halfway through if you got to a file you couldn't delete. And that, that does tend to be the, the problem with um, combining simpler Simpler, simpler operations into uh, a, a large operation is that you have a partial completion uh, question to resolve. <laughs> and you can't take control C when you do R and minus R F star. Absolutely. <laughs> and thank you very much to Matt. Well done. <laughs> and this, thank you.